If you're looking for the better version of Ubuntu, then try Vanilla OS. It's a brand new Ubuntu-based Linux distribution which offers on-demand immutability, a subsystem container to store install packages, and offers the vanilla experience of GNOME Desktop. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the upcoming brand new Ubuntu-based Linux distribution. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you making an ISO image with vanilla OS and also show you install it on your computer. Now, without further ado, let's dive deeper into vanilla OS. The moment you log into Vanilla for the first time, it shows the welcome screen. Now, this allows you to configure the system according to your liking. You can choose a system theme from here. And the good thing that I like about the welcome screen, it will suggest you to install the additional package managers. For example, Ubuntu comes with Snap support by default, but with Vanilla, you have the option to select or unselect the package manager you need. For now, I would select Flatpak and App Image. You can also install the proprietary graphical drivers if you have a dedicated GPU that will improve the performance of graphic intensive applications. Once you are done with the setup, you need to reboot the system to affect these changes. We all know that the Ubuntu team modifies the upstream source of the GNOME by adding some features like the Yaru theme, accent colors, and more. Now, most people prefer the pure GNOME experience that Ubuntu failed to deliver. This is where Vanilla comes into the picture. It's based on Ubuntu and offers a pure GNOME experience. Now, as you can see, Vanilla OS features a stock GNOME shell and looks very minimal compared to Ubuntu. Most of the bloatware of Ubuntu is vanished in Vanilla OS and comes with a minimal set of applications. To install the application you need, you can use Flatpak or GNOME Software Center. In addition to Ubuntu wallpapers, Vanilla also comes with a few pre-installed applications that look quite good. One of the amazing things about Vanilla, it offers on-demand immutability. This makes the root file system immutable and adds extra protection to the operating system. This way, there's less chance of tampering the root system. When a system is in the immutable state, you cannot alter the root file system. Almost is the on-demand immutable utility that gives control to the end user to block or unblock the access to the root file system. You can use a vanilla control center to enable immutability. Once you have enabled it, you cannot make any changes to the root file system. You can also use a terminal and interact with the command line tool. Now just type sudo almost check which reveals the status of the root system. Now, as you can see right now, the system is read only. Now, let's say I want to install a package using apt. If I do that, the immutable tool will interrupt the apt and won't let to alter the root file system. So if you want to make any changes to the root system, you must make the system mutable by running this command. Now, just type sudo almost enter rw, which stands for read write and ro for read only. Once the system is mutable, now we can use apt or dpkg to install the packages on the root file system. 
So that's why it's called on-demand immutability. So once you are done making changes to the root system, you can make it immutable. It's always recommended to make the system immutable. This way you don't run into any issues like system failure by installing futile packages. Now if in case your system is immutable, then there is no way of installing a package using apt or dpkj. This is where Apex, a subsystem container, comes into the picture. Apex is the vanilla OS package manager. It's meant to be simple to use but also powerful with support for installing packages from multiple sources without altering the root file system. So Apex won't install a package or create any configuration files inside the root file system. Rather, it helps install a package inside a container. Let me show you how to use Apex and Vanilla. Now inside a terminal, you can type apx dash dash help to learn the usage of this command. Now once it's done, you need to create an instance of the container. To do so, type apex in it and wait for a few seconds to create a container. Now once it's done creating a container, you can install any package. Now keep in mind that you don't need to use sudo with Apex. Now just say apex install neofetch. This command will be installed inside a container. To prove you that if I say neofetch, then the bash will throw an error. So to run neofetch, just type apex run and the command name. Now as you can see, the command was ran successfully. Overall, I would say vanilla is a secure operating system, which is based on Ubuntu. If you want to install the better version of Ubuntu, then give it a try. Now keep in mind, by the time of recording this video, Vanilla is not yet released and needs some optimizations before it goes public. If you want to install Vanilla at this moment, you need to create your own ISO image. To do so, you need a Linux operating system and mostly Ubuntu or Debian based OS is preferable. Now in my case, I'm using the Linux Mint to create a vanilla OS ISO. Now before that, make sure you have Git and Docker pre-installed on your Linux system. Now once the Docker has been installed, make sure it's running as a daemon service. Now head over to the GitHub page and copy the URL of the vanilla repository. Then type git clone and paste the URL to clone the repository. Then change the directory to OS. Then edit Terraform configuration file inside the etc directory. Here set the channel type to all and save the file. Now head over back to the OS directory and make sure your present working directory is the OS folder. Then copy this docker command and run it and don't forget to run the docker with sudo. Now sit back and relax, the process of building ISO will take around 30 minutes to 1 hour depending on the speed of your computer. Now once it's done, you will see a new folder called build. Inside here, you can find a vanilla ISO file. Go ahead and save this copy somewhere in your location. It's time to create a bootable USB. You can use the dd command or belina etcher and flash the OS to the pen drive. Then boot your computer from the pen drive and install vanilla on your computer drive. If you notice vanilla OS comes with a Calamares installer, this will be replaced with the Jade installer in the stable release. Then go ahead and follow the on-screen instructions to complete the installation of vanilla OS on your computer.
And once it's done, reboot your computer and enjoy vanilla OS. And that's pretty much it. What do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching my video. This has been KSK Ryle. I will catch you in the next one.